off with not knowing uh, what was wrong with the 1UZ. Fortunately, I don't need a new motor. Um, what happened was we never have installed an automatic transmission before. Uh, we went straight from automatic and that went to manual. My RSX is manual. So we've never actually dealt with an automatic transmission and when we went to reinstall it, we didn't know that you're supposed to take the torque converter off the motor and seat it inside the transmission and then bolt the transmission to the motor. Instead, we just bolted the transmission on and it got jammed. Um, Oops. We did have someone inspect the transmission and they think that it's going to be fine. But we had to <laughs> take the transmission off while the motor was in the car, which was quite the process. I got a credit Kyle for that one. Um, but now, uh, the problem is that the starter is broken. So we went to start it after the whole transmission thing and it cranked quite a few times and then it just wouldn't crank anymore. So now we're replacing the starter. There's the, there's the old starter on the bench right there. And it was kind of unmotivating because what we did was we bench tested it using a battery and it fired up perfectly fine. But then we saw this over here your wire going from your main power to the stator or whatever uh, on the motor and as you can see the protective shielding has come off and I think when bolted to the motor this makes it grounded so the starter just cannot disperse the current well enough or anything like that and the one UZ is a terrible motor to do this in because there is the location of the starter right there under the intake manifold so yeah it's pretty stupid um, but we did a test crank with the new starter in, just uh, intake manifolds off, fuel fuse pulled, and it cranks beautifully. So we're hoping this is an indication that when we put the intake back on, it's going to be fine. Um, but we won't know until we try, so. Yep, and before starting it, we're also just going to be fixing some knock sensors that broke a little bit. We also have the high pressure power steering line. We bought a pre-assembled piece. It's this guy right here, and it's leaking like... You can see the red fluid right there actually. It's leaking like a sieve. And also we have the um, heater core on the back of the firewalls leaking. So we got two leaks to fix, put it all back together, and hopefully at the end of today's video, we get a first start and maybe some donuts in the snow. So we just finished putting everything back together. It was a good couple of hours of work, but finally it is done and we're about ready to start it. Um, I feel a little like I'm gonna be sick right now, but. <laughs> Oh, it's gonna be good, I hope. Well, we already checked that it cranks without the fuel, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm just putting the fuel fuse back in. So before it never was cranking like this. So now it's cranking good. And now we should have fuel. Now that I just put that back in. We'll put the headlight back in if we have to later. This don't mind the water protection program here. <laughs> Probably not permanent, but you know what? It'll do. So there we are. I'm ready to go. Okay. Right. How ready are you? Not so if it does start, just uh, watch the arc. Oh. I didn't realize it was home. We'll just cut that out. Alright. Ready for the first start potentially? Yep. Here we go. So that last clip was about a week ago and we've done a ton of troubleshooting since then. What happened was we were not getting any spark at all. So the igniters need to be grounded. The body of them. And uh, they were underneath, we had moved them to the wheel well, just so they were a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. But we hadn't grounded them there, so for now we have them sitting back there looking all ugly. But now we have a spark, woo! Um, but that was not our last problem, unfortunately. We've run into quite a few since then. <laughs> um, so we had some wires crossed here. I think we had number four and six switched. Yeah. So one was switched. sparking when it shouldn't have been, and the other wasn't sparking when it should have been, and it just... It was really shaking. The it was, yeah, it was missing. bad. And then we got it going, and uh, it was firing on four cylinders because this coil was uh broken so i got a new one of those and now it's running on eight cylinders woo but then <laughs> then um it was just idling so badly it was so violent uh we had backfiring it was popping out the intake it was not good um but i think we finally i don't know if we've resolved it yet once it got warm it leveled out we uh, adjusted the um throttle position sensor yeah what, what else was happening 
was Ali would let it idle, and then without even touching the throttle, it would rev up to like what three thousand RPM. Yeah, it sounded three thousand, like, four thousand RPM. And then it would almost die. Then right before it died, it caught itself again, and it was just like non-stop like that. I adjusted the throttle position sensor; it leveled out a little bit. We'll still do it properly with a voltmeter, but uh, we got it idling good. So you want to start it up and show the people? Yeah. Yep, fire it up. So it's, as you can see, it still rough idles a little bit. So like, it does almost die sometimes, which is kind of, oh, did it, it just died. Start it up once more. It was just running perfectly fine, so. We still have a bit of digging to do. The other thing we forgot to mention, I don't know if they're doing it right now, but the cats sometimes glow like bright red, which makes me think it's running too rich, which would explain too much fuel, which is why it almost dies. And also the cats, um, the fuel, excess fuel would go and get burned up in the cats. So for some reason, I think it's burning too rich. And if we could figure that out, I think it would idle good all the time. It was literally just right outside, and then we realized the power steering is leaking everywhere, so we brought it back in to fix. Anyway, anything else you'd like to say before we conclude this video? No, I think that's a pretty good end. That's a pretty good end because it actually works. <laughs> so now we just have to uh, button everything up, and then hopefully it's on the road by uh, April, same time as its friend over here. Alright, thanks for watching. As always, please like, comment, and... Subscribe. Subscribe. <laughs>